Good morning, folks. This is the History Channel from two nights ago, and that is our experiment. Ancient Aliens was doing a piece on Mars and sought to have a show how energy could terraform the planet quickly, how electric geology is really possible, and what it looks like. That's Billy in the Lab, an excellent expose of electricity and matter, followed up by them asking the audience what if it was actually an alien energy beam. Anyway, Helio viewer is lagged a bit today, but SDO site is filling in nicely. The sun woke up a bit yesterday, and we're going to analyze that and the chances for further development today. The coronal hole score is peaking over at our disaster app testing. Thought the peak came three days ago, but we're going higher. We'll be peeking in on the RSOE alert map, looking at the current planetary positions, taking a look at Dr. Phillips' kid's latest cosmic ray experiment, run down some weather, and at the end of the video, please stay tuned for a Mars update from Dr. August Dunning. But first, as always, we're coming to spaceweathernews.com to check out the last day on our star. You see pops and surges and even the hints of our star trying to push some ejecta. The bright flashes associated with the pops are coming from solar active regions with sunspots that are starting to deliver some notable solar flares. This is easily visible in 94 angstroms as you see the X-ray flashing of the flares. Interestingly, it is not our new mega spot down south near the limb that's firing, but the northern sunspot group huddled together just past center longitudes. Sunspot scoring over at the Disaster Prediction app is on the rise as well, mostly due to our thus far silent big guy on the left. It's the northern grouping, as I mentioned, that's producing the flares we care about. Magnetic mixing potential exists at two delta class areas of magnetism where the polarities are in collision. The big guy isn't incapable of flaring, but it'd be easier if he had a friend down there. We of course expected the solar uptick following Mercury conjoining the Sun from Earth's perspective and now moving on to Saturn. Earth and Mars will align with the Sun soon as well, so this solar uptick could continue a while longer. Let's jump over to the solar wind and find no major speed surge yet, but the density of the streams got so thick that even without producing global magnetic instability, it began perturbing Earth's field here and there and began allowing solar plasma to break through our shields and be absorbed by the atmosphere. As I mentioned at the start, thought coronal hole score was peaking three days ago. Whoops, looks like size and position favor us looking right past to the transequatorial extension. Again, as we wait, there have been no big quakes, just more volcanoes. This time, one of the two on alert in Alaska took a quake swarm beneath it, Pavlov. For those who remember that the king tide amplitude will be greater and relevant far before sea level rise for most of the world, king tides rolling higher than ever in Rhode Island as water has begun to inundate local towns at the high marks. Dr. Phillips here, another look at space radiation and the atmosphere, this time a latitudinal look at how radiation is greater towards the polar region. Coming to the weather, we see our Indian Ocean earth spots driving moisture between them, wrapping up around the north to the Indian coastlines and then up towards Bangladesh, producing severe rains and flood conditions. India, Bangladesh, whole area has seen isolated cyclone strength storms and downpours. Also got an earth spot system worth watching north of Hawaii, hopefully too far north to intensify. The low in the southwest U.S. will grow and shift east tonight, driving the rain on its eastern convergence to the parts of Texas that have already been flooded. The far west Atlantic coasts in Europe are getting a breather as the low takes the worst weather inland today. Break won't last very long, however. Down under the story is a set of Antarctic lows running south of the landmass of Australia and having a much easier time reaching up at New Zealand. The Antarctic lows here drive long precipitation lines from the tropics, but a low in South America will run out to sea on one of the lines today, which would intensify it tremendously. Folks, yesterday's Fly on the Wall podcast was so much fun. Bit of magnetic reversal, solar grand minima, weather, debunking. Another week, another hour uploaded to suspiciousobservers.org. Your support is what keeps this all going. It's 4.15 a.m. in the New Valley of the Sun. Please stay tuned for your Mars update with Dr. Dunning. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone. It's 747 at the Mars Science Lab and time for the Mars Weather Report. Looking back on space weather news, the Enlil Spiral predicted a solar wind wave of moderate speed and density impacting the Martian-induced magnetic field on the 4th and 5th. This is confirmed at the ISWA Solar Wind at Mars analysis at 500 kilometers per second and 5 particles per cubic centimeter. As seen in the following video sequences, on the day of impact, the cloud cover is reduced significantly, then rebuilds near the end of the week. Over Sirtis Major, a large cloud cover is blown off on the 4th and rebuilds throughout the week. 
In the southern highlands, cloud cover is reduced and southern crustal field cusps lift dust storms over the southern highlands, which also become more extensive towards the end of the week, obscuring parts of Cyrenium, Ionia, Noches, and Samaria. Cloud cover over the Tharsa Shield volcanoes is reduced on the day of impact and rebuilds. At the beginning of the week, a couple of local dust storms are spotted near the edge of the north polar ice cap over Acidalia and Olympia. By midweek, a more wide-ranging arcade-shaped polar storm developed, propagating southward over Acidalia and eastward along the polar ice cap edge into the following days. Scattered afternoon, water ice clouds were spotted over many regions, from Olympus to Elysium. Val Marineris exhibited significant deep canyon fog accumulation during the end of the week after the solar impact. But despite the surge in storm activity, both rovers, Curiosity and Gale Crater, and Opportunity and Endeavor Crater, experienced storm-free skies throughout the week. Anlil is predicting another wave that impacted on the 8th, and we will confirm this in next week's Mars weather analysis. It's a sunny 38 degrees at the surface right now, and minus 107 degrees at night. See you next week.